So the story this week is that Lord Frost has had his Article 16 strategy totally blown out of the water and reportedly by the US. Um, now we don't know too much in the way of actual details here, so these are reports of what has happened that the US has called the UK and effectively told them to drop the Article 16 shenanigans that are trying with the EU. So this led me to a bit of a theme, a bit of a thought really, which is it, just, it has been obvious all the way through that Lord Frost, as a negotiator, is totally outclassed. And I thought I'd like to expand upon that theme for this video and try and explain why and why this is significant. And the first theme, which had the title of the video, is that Lord Frost's negotiation skills were learnt as a businessman. Now, I'm going to start by saying this does not mean that businessmen can't negotiate. Businessmen, some businessmen can negotiate exceedingly well. But what is important to understand is that business negotiation is not the same as government level negotiations. And the reason for that then in a business negotiation, they generally tend to be a little bit more adversarial. They tend to be a little bit more pressured, and there's more scope for flexibility, there's more scope for bluffing, there's more scope for doing tactics like holding hostage issues as part of the negotiation. You know, where we'll only give you this if you give us, you know, something in return, sort of tactics. And these are hallmarks of business negotiation. Uh, sometimes they can be used successfully, sometimes not. However, and this is why I always get annoyed whenever people always suggest that bring in so-and-so businessmen to go negotiate a deal at government or state level. It doesn't work. Uh, it fails miserably. Because what you have to understand at government level negotiation is that the skill sets are completely different. So for starters, you rarely can bluff. Lord Frost has been operating from a position where he thinks he can make up the rules as he goes along. And to some extent, in a business negotiation, you can do that or bluff it a little bit. But you can't do that at government level because any government negotiator or negotiator operating at that level, the first thing they always do is check with the lawyers on anything. And they'll never answer anything without checking the lawyers or a deep expert first. So you can't put forward ill thought through not fully legal, if you like, positions, because the, you, if you do so, you're working upon the assumption that the other side are not doing their due diligence. And if you're going up against the EU, working upon the assumption that they're not doing their due diligence is a guaranteed measure of failure. Um, they are of the world leaders in this, they have entire departments. In fact, one of the basic reasons for not liking the EU would they have so many people. They have a massive bureaucracy. But in this particular scenario, that massive bureaucracy works for them. They can float any position, any legal issue throughout that entire bureaucracy. And however many hundreds of people it goes through, there will be a whole range of experts on issues. And they will think at any problem any issue from a wide variety of angles. So if you propose something or make some kind of assertion that can be easily disproved, then the odds are that the EU bureaucracy is going to find a way to disprove it. So that's an obvious failing made by Lord Frost. Another massive failing is the concept of collaborative working. So one of the secrets to operating at government level is that when you negotiate or try to push forward any policy, you are completely dependent upon that policy or that position being implemented by people you do not have control over. So think about that. If you're a businessman, you want something done, you tell your staff, go do it, and they run and do it. If you are a minister, a politician, uh, and sure, in your department, there's some odds of you being able to say, get something done and it will be done. But let's imagine that the implementation involves other government departments, or even worse, other governments, other foreign governments. You cannot just, you know, 
dictate that things will be done because you say so. You have to persuade. You have to collaborate. You have to work with them. And you have to make them believe that it is in the interest to do that policy, do that thing you want them to do. It's a different skill set. Uh, and it does not at all gel with traditional business skill set. And that's very much true of negotiations. You have to work together as a team to succeed at government level negotiations because quite often the implementation may not be some, there'll be a whole host of other things, not just implementation, that may not be under your control. And we're seeing this a lot in terms of some of the dysfunction in the UK government in that um, a lot of the things that are negotiated end up not being within Lord Frost's control. Uh, he just dumps it on other people. Um, and that is not leading to harmonious policy making, not leading to good decision making, and not leading to much support, in fact. Uh, and this can be seen in things like immigration policy, setting up tariff barriers, um, being able to manage trade, all those things. Um, ironically enough, are not within the control of the Department of International Trade. They're in control of all the other government departments. And um, I think it's reasonably safe to say that the other government departments are not happy by having individuals or other government departments create problems for them, which is currently what's happening. So that's going to undermine Lord Frost's position quite fatally when trying to negotiate the EU. They will, you know, they will th themselves figure this out. So collaboration happens at all levels, internally and externally. And um, and I think this is one of the things that very much brought Theresa May down when she was trying to negotiate the Brexit deal. She didn't at all collaborate with other members of her party, even the opposition parties, uh, the regional assemblies, the regional government, anything like that. And... Um, in, in that sort of scenario, you just don't get buy-in for something as big as Brexit. Uh, and that failure to engage stakeholders um, was, a, was a massive reason why Theresa May failed. Boris Johnson came in and he was able to shift the goalpost in regard to that failure. However, he hasn't really addressed that particular issue in certain ways, or Lord Frost hasn't either. And that can be seen now in the fault lines with Northern Ireland, with Scotland wanting independent and so on. They don't feel engaged. They don't feel like they've had a stake in these negotiations. And they don't throw their support behind it. There isn't that buy-in. And the EU will know that. So yet again, all those external factors will undermine Lord Frost's ability to negotiate from a position of strength. And then we come to perhaps the final reason uh, currently, or at least the most obvious one, uh, why I failed. There are many others, but I won't go into that detail. And that's the involvement of the US. And when you're negotiating at government level or an international level, especially in multinational type forums, you want as many friends as you can get. There is power in numbers. Um, and it's not just in numbers as well. You can have economic strength, you can have military strength, but you can also have simple expertise. So what I mean by that is that you can be a small country, but you can do extremely effective at the international stage by being extremely competent in a narrow area, for example. Um, and that allows you to bring certain advantages, certain skill sets that other nations will want. So now, of course, the EU themselves are multi-skilled. They have a whole range of expertise in a very wide range of areas. But what they also know, that doesn't always win the argument for them. But what can win the argument for them is having a lot of people supporting their position. And this is why you saw Barnier do such an extensive effort to make sure that all the EU nations supported any negotiation position he was adopting um, whilst he was negotiating with the UK. That massively strengthened his hand. And I think we can also detect that the EU has not been slack in engaging with the US. They have obviously managed to persuade the US to support their position. 
And when the US supports any particular big policy or position on the international circuit, that is a big influencer. The US are you know, the lead and superpower in the world. So it doesn't necessarily mean what they say goes, but it does mean that they carry one hell of a big stick. And I think in this particular case, and if the story is as true, that the US have wielded their stick to beat Lord Frost into submission, that betrays the fact that he hasn't properly analysed the balance of power. He hadn't made sure to have friends. Because, and then this one, another perhaps another example of why the EU are such effective negotiators and why Lord Frost is so outclassed, is the EU had not just had a very strong position, stayed solidly behind it, but they've also brought in other people successfully to also defend their position, and in this case, the US. And the US have the ability to apply an awful lot of punitive sanction onto the UK in a wide range of areas. Have they done this? We don't know. But it is not hard to imagine a conversation between Biden and Frost Sorry, or Biden and Johnson, I should say, that goes along the lines of, you know, stop doing this or else. We don't know what the or else was, um, but he has that ability. And he had already stated a public position that for him and the US, uh, peace in Northern Ireland is absolutely critical. And if the US sees the full adoption of the New Northern Ireland Protocol um, as critical to securing that peace, then they will not tolerate anyone else who undermines that position. And I fear that Lord Frost has just found himself somewhat naked in the spotlight of the prison yard um, without that rope to climb over the wall uh, to escape. So what does that mean going forward? It could mean total capitulation. Or it could mean a bit of weaseling, a bit of attempts to bluff his way constantly out of this position. But I fear he had, his credibility has been significantly undermined. And with that, any ability to secure a better position from the EU, whether it be on the Northern Ireland Protocol or anything else, is going to be extremely difficult. Will there be lots more noise? No doubt there will. Will there be anything of substance, substance, substance achieved? To be honest, at this point, I think it could well be checkmate. I don't think it's going to get very far. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter, and I welcome all comments uh, in the comment section.